Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Slovak political parties. So welcome to this episode on Slovak parties. This episode was requested by someone on YouTube. If you want me to make an episode on another country's political parties, just let me know via email or in the comments, and I will get around to it at some point. I'd also like to thank Professor Kevin Deegan Krauss from Wayne State University for helping me out with this episode, along with both the SAS and PS parties for responding to my emails and helping me write their sections of the episode. Now, I like to give some background at the start of each of these, and all I really want to say for this episode is Slovak politics are very, very dynamic and in flux pretty much all the time. Parties that have traditionally been very important, like parties that represent the large Hungarian minority and the Slovak Nationalist Party, were completely removed from the legislature in the last election in 2020, while parties that were expected to make it in just barely missed out, and some of the biggest winners really were entirely unexpected. Along with that, since the last election there have been a lot of breakoffs of other parties, so if Slovak politics are one thing, it's ever-changing, with voters fluctuating which party they back quite often. So if you were listening to this even five or maybe even just like two or three years from now, be prepared for a good chunk of parties I talk about to either be really, really irrelevant or completely in a different position. So the election that took place in 2020 was for the National Council. The National Council is a legislator of the country, with it made up of 150 members who are elected via proportional representation. So if party A wins 20% of the vote, they should win roughly 20% of the seats in the council. It is a 5% electoral threshold, meaning that a party has to get at least 5% of the vote if they want to make it into office. However, Slovakia also has a different threshold when it comes to parties working together. So let's say party A and B want to work together for the election, and combine forces. Well, now they have to get 7% of the vote. And if party C and D also want to work with party A and B, then they have to get at least 10% of the vote. This will all be important for one of the future parties, so just keep that in mind. The National Council will elect the Prime Minister and their cabinet, along with helping create laws, budgets, and regulations. Slovakia is also a member of the EU, with it sending 14 representatives to sit in the EU Parliament. The first party we have is Obisinaya Ludi a Neveselista Obisinosti, or Ordinary People and Independent Personalities, or OLANO. OLANO is the largest party in the National Council, and is the leading government party. Olano combines populist and moderate conservative ideas and is overall center-right. It tries to capture a wide range of opinions, uniting over the desire to rid Slovakia of corruption. Its support base is fairly close to many average Slovakians, although they tend to be just slightly younger, slightly more likely to live in urban areas, and are slightly wealthier and more educated on average. A lot of support seems to come from the regions just outside the capital Bratislava, the west of the country, and in the city Košice. It has 53 seats in the National Council, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits with the European People's Party group. Olano is headed by Igor Matovic, the former Prime Minister of the country, and is currently one of the Deputy Prime Ministers, and is also currently the Minister of Finance. The current Prime Minister, Eduard Heger, is also a member of the party. One of Alana's main goals is removing corruption. It believes in increasing transparency, reducing bureaucracy, increasing the power law enforcement and courts have to prosecute corrupt officials, and wants increased independence for the Public Procurement Office. Alano is pro-EU and pro-NATO, supporting further European integration and NATO enlargement while also opposing migrant quotas. Alano also supports more direct democracy and the digitization of government services, wants to make raising a family cheaper and easier, opposes abortions, and wants increased opportunities for the Roma community by increased education. Also, on Alana's website, if you go to the About section, it has a list of all the people that have left or been forced out of office because of them. I don't know why, but something about it just seems so ballsy that I kind of have to respect it, and I wanted to mention it. Now, if you look at opinion polling currently, you'll notice Alano has seen a massive drop in the polls, and there are several factors for that. First off, Alana's win in the last election was in many ways a shock, since they only really saw a huge rise in the polls in the last month of the election. And since Slovak voters are so unreliable, their polling numbers have sort of naturally gone down. COVID also hasn't really helped. And with 12,000 COVID deaths in the country, opposition parties can use that as ammo against them. Olano also has been suffering from infighting with his coalition partners, with Olano leader Matovic being forced to step down as prime minister just a couple months ago due to pressure from his coalition partners. 
This infighting has led to questions about how effective they are at governments, and a general sense that Alano's populist arguments worked well in opposition, but as a leader of the country, they are struggling a bit. The next government coalition party is Smerodina, or We Are Family. We Are Family is a Slovak nationalist and hard-right populist party. Its support base, interestingly enough, doesn't really line up with other nationalist parties throughout Europe. It gets a lot of support among younger voters, who have often just started a family, and gets a decent amount of support among women. In 2016, a lot of its support base had a higher income than average, and was more urban than the average voter, but I'm not sure if that still carries over today. In the last election, it got a lot of votes in the center of the country, and in Kosice. It has 17 seats in the National Council. The party is headed by Boris Koller, who is a member and speaker of the National Council. Also Koller, fun fact, is the father of 11 children with 10 different women. We are a family? More like, Koller is making a big family, huh? Huh? Please clap. We Are Family wants to make raising a family in Slovakia easier. It supports raising pensions for women who have more children, wants cheap affordable housing, supports free public transportation for school students, and seemingly wants to give families with children some version of universal basic income. It also backs equal income for women on maternity leave, wants to strongly reduce immigration into the country, holds conservative views on social norms, wants to crack down on rich corrupt oligarchs, and opposes further EU integration. While We Are Family is the third largest party in the National Council, it has really struggled to get elected in local office or into the EU Parliament, and hasn't really done well in these elections. One of the big problems is that there are a lot of Slovak nationalist parties in the country, many of whom have existed for longer or can claim to be more ideologically pure when compared to We Are Family. Also, apparently, several members of the party have connections or alleged connections with the Slovak Mafia and organized crime, which has hurt their image. The third largest party in the ruling coalition is Sloboda e Solidarita, or Freedom and Solidarity, or SAS. SAS is a right-wing liberal party, and holds certain elements of libertarian, at least in the American context, ideals. It really likes to portray itself as the party of experts and of technical knowledge. It gets most of its support from people aged 25 to 50, are more likely to be male and not very religious, usually are university educated, and tend to have a higher income. They also get a lot of support among urban areas, especially in the capital Bratislava. It currently has 13 seats in the National Council and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the European Conservative and Reformist Group. The party is currently headed by Richard Sulik, who is one of the deputy prime ministers of the country and is also currently the Minister of Economy. SAS supports increased economic and social freedom. It wants to lower taxes, wants to cut down on bureaucracy, supports a limited welfare state and social security, and wants universal basic income. It supports Slovakia's membership within the EU and NATO, but also opposes increased integration within the EU, and dislikes the migrant quotas the EU has. It also supports women's reproductive rights, wants to decriminalize cannabis, wants to crack down on corruption, favors the digitization of government services, and is opposed to populist rhetoric. Now, SAS suffers the same problem many liberal parties throughout Europe tend to face. They often get accused by their opponents of really just representing the rich in the country, and not doing enough to protect those most vulnerable. SAS and Alana, while in coalition together, really have spent a lot of time arguing with each other, which doesn't necessarily make for a great and stable government. However, despite all of this, it seems unlikely the ruling coalition will break apart anytime soon, largely to keep the country stable under COVID. SAS also has been doing quite well in recent polling, so it seems unlikely it will disappear anytime soon. The last coalition partner is Zaludi, or For the People. Zaludi is a moderate liberal party, leaning slightly to the right, but generally appealing to centrist. It was formed in 2019 by then-president of the country, Andrzej Kiska, and his supporters. It gets a lot of support from urban areas and in the east of the country. It has 10 seats in the National Council. It is headed by Varand Kardemisova, one of the deputy prime ministers of the country, and is currently the Minister of Investments and Regional Development of Slovakia. Zeludi wants to improve civil society and democracy in Slovakia. It wants to make it easier for NGOs to operate in Slovakia, wants to crack down on corruption, wants to fight radical extremism in the country, wants to increase turnout for local elections, and wants more transparency. It is pro-EU and pro-NATO, and wants to reform the electoral system so parties aren't elected by the national vote, but instead by a regional vote, and wants to set the number of seats in the National Council to whatever it is based on turnout. It also wants to increase social security and welfare spending towards the Roma community, and wants to do more to protect and promote their culture. It wants to make state-owned businesses profitable, and remove political pointies within them, and wants to increase state spending on cultural activities. Zaludi will base largely around the ideas of Kiska, 
no longer has Kiska as a member due to him retiring from politics. With this, the party really has lost their biggest personality, and I kind of get the sense that no one is really thinking about the party too much. Its role as a junior coalition partner keeps it relevant, but besides that, I don't expect the party to raise to a dominant place in Slovak politics. So that ends the government parties, and we will now go to the opposition. First, we have Smer Slovenska Socialna Demokracia, or Direction Slovak Social Democracy, or Smer SD. Smer is a social democratic party, representing the left of Slovak politics. It was historically considered one of the dominant parties in the country, running from 2006 to 2010, and then 2012 to 2020. Its support base tends to be old, more religious, less educated, and tends to be very working class. It gets much of its support from rural areas, especially those in the north and east of the country. It is currently headed by Robert Fico, the former prime minister of the country, and current member of the National Council. Smer prides itself in fighting for strong government involvement in the economy, and fighting to keep unemployment down. When Fico was prime minister, he had fought for making it harder for companies to fire employees, wanted to give free lunches to school children, and tried to protect the welfare state in the country. Smer is pro-EU, supporting the euro and continued integration within Europe, but has opposed antagonizing Russia and opposes sanctions on Russia. The party has used nationalist and populist sentiment to attack its opponents and gain support, such as earlier this year when Fico said, while comparing himself to the current government, that he cared more about the spiritual needs of Slovakia than the physical needs of homosexuals, and has historically opposed immigration. The biggest complaint people have against Smer is that they are generally considered to be widely corrupt. While in office, the party was accused of stealing billions of euros which were given to either state officials or their friends, depriving the state of these funds. The most infamous government scandal happened back in 2018, when high-ranking members of the party were accused of aiding the killing of an investigative journalist, Jan Kuciak, and his fiancée. It seems like almost all parties have categorically rejected working with Smer, both because of the corruption allegations, and because they fear working with Smer might hurt their chances in the next election. Many see the party as filled with broken promises and unable to actually help the people of Slovakia. Well, with the bad press around Smer, a group of politicians from Smer have broken off and formed their own party, Hlas Socialna Demokracia, or Voice Social Democracy, or Hlas SD. The party is in the same ideological niche as Smer, being social democratic and center-left. It seems to hope to capture the same support base of Smer, while also expanding out to younger voters. The party currently has 11 seats in the National Council. It is headed by Peter Pellegrini, the former prime minister of the country and current member of the National Council. Hoa, similar to Smer, backs strong government involvement in the economy and wants to double welfare benefits towards families with children and backs free lunches for children. It also wants to increase power to local governments, wants to reduce the value-added tax down to 5%, and is pro-EU. The big problem Halas faces is that for many, it seems the party isn't different enough from Smer for people not to associate it with corruption. Many parties seem to refuse to work with the party, similar to how they treat Smer. Pellegrini himself has been accused of corruption and appealing to the same populist rhetoric that Smer has historically used. However, despite this, Hlas currently is the highest polling party in polls, and it seems that if an election were to be held today, they would win a large victory. Although, as mentioned before, Slovak voters are fickle, so who knows what would actually happen. After that, we have Ludostrana Nasi Slovensko, or People's Party are Slovakia, or LSNS. LSNS is probably one of the most extreme parties in not just Slovakia, but in Europe in general. It is considered to be far-right and a neo-fascist party, glorifying the World War II-era fascist Slovak Republic. The flag of the movement is also remarkably similar to the Slovak Republic's flag. Its support base is often found in rural areas in the center and south of the country, and often are older and have received less education on average. It currently has nine seats in the National Council. It is currently headed by Mariam Kotobela, the former governor of the Bansk Bastiria region, and currently a member of the National Council. The party's far-right views means it supports nationalistic social policy and criticizing both unregulated capitalism along with Marxist economics. It favors a mixed corporatist economy, with the state playing a leading role in the economy and wants to nationalize the healthcare sector and make college free. It is strongly anti-EU and anti-NATO, seeing Slovakia's NATO membership as turning Slovakia effectively into an American puppet state, and advocates leaving both organizations and aligning with Russia and its allies. It has earned a reputation of holding hostile views towards the Roma community, advocating for a paramilitary organization to be formed to patrol and monitor Roma communities and crack down on crime occurring there. 
It also argues for a ban on abortion, wants to remove non-European immigrants and specifically Muslim immigrants from the country, opposes the LGBTQ community, wants to reduce the size of the National Council, and wants to introduce a 15% tax rate. LSNS is, if you couldn't guess, hated by many segments of society within Slovakia for its radical, extremist, and hateful views. This limits its ability to expand as a party, gets the party in legal trouble with several attempts being made to ban the party since its formation, and means that almost no party in the country wants to work with them at all. This ban on any cooperation means it's very difficult for the party to get anything done when they get into office. There also have been accusations that the party is funded directly by Russia, considering some of its foreign policy stances. Finally, the party has seen a good amount of infighting, and several different parties have been formed as breakoffs of the party. The next three parties are going to be breakoff branches of LSNS, with the first party being Republika, or Republic. Republika seems to be a slightly more moderate breakoff of LSNS, with the party being broadly conservative with strong nationalistic overtones. It was formed after LSNS changed its party rules and gave Cotabella greater power over the party. It currently has five members of the National Council and sends one member to EU Parliament who sits alone. That member of EU Parliament is Milan Uric, who is also the party's leader. Republika, like LSNS, is anti-EU and anti-NATO, but doesn't actually want to leave the EU, instead wanting the Union to be purely economic and opposes political integration. It also argues for a mixed economy, wants to lower taxes for the average citizen, backs socially conservative values, and is in favor of volunteer vaccination. While Republika is a more moderate LSNS, it's too young to really separate from LSNS, and thus it faces many of the same problems LSNS faces. Other parties treat them like a fascist party, and refuse to really work with them including LSNS, who I would imagine are upset about splitting the party. In order for the party to survive, I will imagine they will have to work hard building themselves up as different, more moderate, and distinct from LSNS. Currently in polling, it is polling below the electoral threshold, and we'll have to see in a couple years how Republika is doing, or if it even exists at all. The next party is Zivolt Nada da Strana, or Life National Party. Zivolt is a Christian conservative party, with the party being a breakoff of another party we will talk about a bit later on, the Christian Democratic Movement. It was formed from members who wanted the party to only work with other parties who promised to back anti-abortion measures. Zivolt holds socially conservative views, opposes military intervention in the Middle East, and wants to reduce food imports. In the last election, it worked with LSNS, but has since distanced themselves from LSNS due to disagreements with the party. I get the sense that no one is really thinking about the party a whole lot. They don't show up in any opinion polls, and they don't even have a wiki page on the Slovak Wikipedia. Regardless, the party has three members in the National Council. It is currently headed by Tomas Teraba, a member of the National Council. Finally, the last breakoff branch is Slovak Patriot. Slovak Patriot was formed around non-inscript member of EU Parliament, Miroslav Radachowski, who was elected as a member of LSNS and it seems like he really is the only notable member of the party. The party seems to hold socially conservative policies, argues for reforms towards the electoral system of the country, and wants to reduce EU influence in Slovakia. Overall, the party is very small, and much like Zivolts, I'm not sure how relevant they will be in the long run. Now, this next party didn't actually win seats in the last election, but it does have one member in the National Council, due to a member of Zaludi defecting to the party. Progressing of Slovensko, or Progressive Slovakia, or PS, is unsurprisingly a progressive party. It was widely expected to win seats in the 2020 election, but since it ran with another party, Spolo, and only got 6.96% of the vote, it just barely failed to make it into the National Council. The party gets most of its support among young urban voters, especially those under 30, and those that live in Bratislava, Košice, and the Diaspora. The party, along with its single member in the National Council, also sends two members to EU Parliament, where they sit in the Renew Europe group. The party is currently headed by Irana Bihari, a lawyer who has historically fought against racism in Slovakia. The current president of Slovakia, Susanna Kapatova, while not officially a member of the party, was elected with PS support and was formally a member of the party. Many of the policies PS backs are stereotypical progressive policies. It supports LGBTQ and minority rights, and opposes extremism in the country, along with support for increased environmental regulations. It is pro-EU and pro-NATO, and is supportive of liberal, centrist, and other moderate parties and organizations in Slovakia. It also wants to crack down on corruption, and favors the digitization of government services. While the most high-profile member of the party, Kapotova, is widely liked, being one of the most trusted Slovak politicians, 
It seems like a lot of her popularity hasn't really transferred over to her party. PS and its coalition partner really failed to energize enough support among its electorate last election, which led many to either not vote or chose to vote for someone else. The urban electorate seems to be one of the most competitive in the country, so PS not putting enough focus on them seemed to really hurt their chances of getting elected. PS also has problems with their social message, since the majority of the country tends to hold more conservative views on gender and immigration. However, despite this, the party is currently doing well in polls, and if they ran alone, it seems like they would be able to get into office. After that, we have PS's ally, Spolo Opstia Democrazia, or Together Civic Democracy. It is a close ally of PS, working with them in the previous EU and national election, and it seems like they will continue to have a positive relationship with each other. Spolo seems to be slightly on the right of PS, but still very moderate and with a large focus on the environment. Its support base is also similar to PS, being largely urban and young. It currently has one seat in the National Council, due to a defection, and sends two members to EU Parliament, where they sit in the European People's Party group. It is currently led by Yulai Hips, an education reform activist. The party is in favor of a Green New Deal, hoping to make Europe carbon neutral by 2050, and wants to set up a conservation fund in the country. It also backs pro-EU policies and increase European integration, wants to promote investigative journalism in the country, wants to reduce corporate taxes, wants to reduce the pay gap between men and women, opposes populism in the country, and wants to reduce the minimum wage. The biggest problem with Spolo is that when you really think about the party, it's almost always as a partner of PS and never really independent of them. It debatably could just be seen as a puppet party of PS, always being an afterthought and never with any serious loyal support base. PS has the popular Kaputova, while Spalu doesn't really have any incredible popular politicians. In polls, you can see just how low they are, with it polling at around 2%. I could imagine that PS either might fully absorb the party one day, or just abandon the party next election to ensure that PS can make it into the National Council, and prevent it just barely missing out like last time. And finally, our last party is... And this one is really tough. I'm, I'm going to absolutely butcher this. Kriskansko Demokratskie Hinutie, or the Christian Democratic Movement, or KDH. KDH is a Christian Democratic and moderate conservative party. The party represents moderate, often rural Christians, who are pro-EU, and wants Christian interests and values to be upheld. It historically has been one of the biggest players in Slovak politics until 2016, when it lost representation in the National Council, which it still doesn't have. It however gets a decent amount of support in local and European elections, with most support in the north and east, largely from older rural voters. It currently sends two members to EU Parliament, who sits in the European People's Party group. It is currently led by Mian Majarski, the former mayor of Levocha, and is the current governor of the Presov region. So that is going to end this episode on Slovak politics. In summary, I'd say the current government is a right-leaning government, combining conservatives, populists, and liberals all together while the opposition is made up primarily of those on the left and hard-right nationalists, along with a small but significant coalition of centrists and moderates. I realize this episode really was a lot, or at least it felt like a lot writing it down, or maybe that was just the heat wave. But I think it's important to talk about all the different parties since Slovak politics is so dynamic, you kind of have to look around to really find out what is going on. Anyways, I hope you enjoy. Again, I'd like to thank the person who requested this episode for requesting it, if you want me to do an episode on another country's politics, just email me or drop a comment below and I'll get to it at some point. I'd also again like to thank Professor Kevin Deegan Krauss for helping me find the support bases for some of the larger parties for this episode. It really helped out, so thank you. Anyways, the next episode is going to be on the history of Bhutan, which I'll work on right away, and then I'll start working on Canadian parties and British parties. So thank you. If you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.